On today's episode, I'm going to show you my workflow when I'm using Topaz Gigapixel AI to upsize my digital art images for print. And also, I want to show you some of my digital art that I've created using products like uh, Topaz Studio 2, just to give you some inspiration. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'm going to start off by showing you some of my digital art. Now, most of this stuff has been done in Photoshop, and I'm using uh, Topaz Studio 2 as a plugin. Maybe a couple of the pieces I've used, like Corel Painter, to do them. But I just want to give you some inspiration, just to give you some ideas of what you can do with your photographs. You can turn them into works of art, which I love to do. And I have a bunch of videos on my channel showing you how to do that. In fact, I did a tutorial on this particular image, which I will link at the end of this video. And I've used uh, Photoshop and Topaz Studio 2 to create it. Before we get started and I show you my workflow for working with Topaz Gigapixel AI with photo art, I'm just going to show you a little bit of a slideshow. Hopefully just to give you a little bit of inspiration. All of these images start out as photographs and then I take those photographs and I run them into Photoshop generally and then I'll send them into Topaz Studio 2 as a plug-in. I'll run various filters on them inside of Topaz Studio 2 like the Impression Filter or the Simplify Filter and I'll just take my time, relax, and see what I can come up with. The other thing I like to do is add texture to some images like that rose right there. That has a texture applied to it. And you could get really beautiful results just by applying textures to images. Also, if you want to see how I do some of this artwork, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel and it's called uh, Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox. And I think there's over like 40 some videos in there showing you how I make this type of photo art. And I use my own images and at times I'll use stock images like this was a stock image. And I'll just try different things and just really, I take my time. I have a lot of fun. A lot of times I'll listen to some good music, maybe drink a glass of wine just to relax. And I'll tell you, art is really just a great way of just bringing out your inner artist, okay? And I'm, I'm sure a lot of you that watch my channel have that inner artist inside you. And you just want to bring it out. And I hopefully I inspire some of you to do this kind of stuff. It's really not that hard. It's just, if you have that desire inside, I think all you need to do is let it come out of you. And watch some of my videos and see how easy this can be. And just give it a try. And I'd love to hear from you and let me know what you think. Now let me show you how I use Gigapixel AI. I want to show you my workflow because a lot of times I want to print out my work. I have a lot of my work hanging up my house. I like to sell my digital art as well sometimes. And uh, you need to upsize it to make big prints out of it. And Gigapixel AI is really great. And now with Gigapixel AI, they have this new feature in there, a new model. It's called the Art and CG model, standing for Art and Computer Graphics. And it's really great for images that are not photographs. In other words, computer graphics or art drawings or maybe images that you've scanned. So it's really great for all that kind of stuff. And I just want to show you that workflow now. So I have this image here. Uh, part of it was done in uh, Topaz Studio 2 and some of the actual paint strokes. If I zoom in here, you can see some of these paint strokes are actually done in Photoshop. A lot of times I'll use the paintbrush tool in Photoshop to uh, 
add strokes to the image on top of what I've done in Topaz Studio 2. Just to add a more personal touch to it, I like doing that sometimes. And if you're interested in seeing a video where I do that kind of a thing, please let me know in the comments section below. But I'm going to show you how easy this is to upsize with Gigapixel AI and it's almost 4,000 pixels wide by uh, around like 3,200 pixels high. But if I wanted to make a nice big print out of it, I think I would need to upsize it a bit here. So let me show you how I do that. Normally, when you want to use like a Topaz filter, you would come up here to filter and you would find the filter like Topaz Studio 2 or Topaz Denoise AI or Sharpen AI or something like that. But you will not find Gigapixel here. Where you're going to find Gigapixel is if you come under File and come down here, see where it says Automate? Once you've installed Gigapixel on your computer, it's going to live in this Automate section. And you'll find it right here. All you need to do is click that, and that'll open up Topaz Gigapixel AI, and then we'll go ahead and upsize it. And once we do that, we it'll go right back into Photoshop. After we click apply, of course, which is right down here. But first, we need to uh, go ahead and upsize this. So the first thing I'm going to do is, if you look down here, you can see this image is 4066 by 3253 pixels. Okay? And if I upsize it two times, which that was the last setting I had this on, by the way, and it remembers that, it would upsize to an 8132 by a... 6506 pixel image, which would be a pretty nice sized image there. 8132 by 6506 pixels would give me a print that is roughly 22 and a half inches by 18 inches if I used a pixel per inch of uh, 360, which is what my Epson uh, printer recommends for me. So that's how you get that, that inch equivalent. So you just take your pixels per inch into the pixels and that'll tell you how many inches you have. I'm not using the comparison view today. I'm using the single view, but you can change your views up here where it says view. You got single, split, side by side, and comparison, okay? I'm just going to use the single view. Hey, and by the way, here's a little tip for you. You can use your mouse or your trackpad if you have zooming capabilities, and you can change the size of your image, which is kind of nice. So now we can see I have a full-size image up on the screen. And it, it takes a little while to update itself when you're using a full-size image. Now, I got to tell you this also. If you have Gigapixel AI and you have an older computer, you could experience a lot slower processing times because it's all dependent upon the... Uh, the processor, how fast it is, you know, how much RAM you have, and do you have a uh, graphics processor, what's your CPU like, all those things are determining factors. Today I'm working on a piece of art and I want to upsize it, so I'm not going to use the standard model, lines, or low resolution, or very compressed. I'm going to use the art and computer graphics model. So that's what I have selected. I'm in the auto setting, so I'm going to keep it there. So I the suppressed noise is on. I probably don't need to suppress noise, to be honest with you, but I'm going to let the default the way it is because I have great results when I do. And according to the auto setting, remove blur is set at 40. I'm just going to leave it there. But I notice face refinement is turned on. I don't need that. So I'm simply going to turn that off. Now I can come in and zoom into this image here. And let me see what I got. Give it a second here to process itself out. So here's the before and here's the after. I'm going to zoom in even closer here so you can really see it. Give it a chance to update again. So here's the before and here's the after. Before and after. And what I'm noticing here is I can see a lot more detail in these paint strokes. Now let me go over to some different areas of the image. For instance, down in here. Let it process again. Here's the before. And if you can see that, you can see the uh, jaggedy lines and some of the lined areas. And when I release it, you can see they fill right in. So here's the before and here is the after. But my paint strokes look really amazing. And I find I get great results when I use this. So believe me, it really does do a great job. But there we go. It's just that simple auto setting, art and CG. Oh, and this is important too. You have different methods for upsizing. Now I'm using scale. I'm upsizing it two times. But you could use width or height if you want to. But... You have your choices, but I'm using two times upsizing.
And now the only thing left for me to do is click apply, which I'll click apply now. And I'll leave this in real time and you'll see how long it takes on my computer. I'm using an iMac and it's a 2019 model. Uh, as you can see, there's my information up on the screen for you now. So you could check that out. It's an eight gigabyte processor, but that's how long it takes. Now that we're back in Photoshop, you can see how much bigger it really is. And if I click on my history and click on the original image the way I opened it, it was this size, and now it's upsized to this size, okay? So now, now let me go ahead and fit it to the screen for you. And as you can see now, it is uh, roughly over 8,000 pixels wide by 6,400 high. Well, there it is. That's my gigapixel workflow when I'm working from Photoshop. Now, if I know I want to print something after I've created it in Photoshop, I'll just go ahead and upsize it right in Photoshop. Or sometimes I'm not done working with the piece. I'll save it. It'll be back in Lightroom. And if it is complete and I didn't upsize it yet, I can also upsize it from Lightroom if I wanted to. But I will use that art and CG model because I find it really works well. So give it a try. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.